Good day. My name is uh, John Davis, and I'm the chair of the Special Interest Group for High Performance Computing. And today I'm excited to share with you this vision of building an open HPC ecosystem uh, and how do we uh, do that uh, with Respond. So overall, I'll talk about the HPC vision, uh, then I'll move into the SIG HPC goals, uh, to highlight some of the activities that we've been doing, then go into the research. And a lot of this stuff has already been covered in talks in the first five weeks. So I'll refer you to those for more details. And then I'll finish with some concluding thoughts. So when it comes to uh, open HPC ecosystem today, what I'm showing here is this collection from applications down to hardware and how those uh, interact with the systems today. So all these things in blue are open or have open components, including Gromax, uh, different libraries like FMTW or BLAST, uh, using the schedulers like Slurm, LLVM or GCC for the tool chain, and even all the way down to Linux. And as we look at these things, there's a collection uh, of these applications and software on the RISC-V uh, GitHub website that you can see. It's a little bit deprecated, but uh, it's a good reference. Uh, and we're also building a system which allows us to uh, compile workloads, applications, libraries to see if they work on RISC-V. But fundamentally, in this world of hardware software co-design, we've been hindered by closed ecosystems for CPUs, GPUs, and ASICs. And so RISC-V is a language and a mechanism uh, to give us the capability to do both software and hardware co-design. So what that looks like in the HP system of tomorrow is this combination of applications all the way down to CPUs, GPUs, and ASICs using RISC-V that allows us to build that overall ecosystem which was very difficult to do uh, before the advent of RISC V. And the exciting thing about Europe is we're starting to see traction and the capability for them to lead the way in creating this completely open software hardware stack, or at least a stack based on these open components. And what we're seeing is RISC V providing this open source hardware alternative to the dominating proprietary non EU solutions where access to technology is critical, especially in uh, future digital economies. And so now we're seeing Europe looking at uh, technology independence as a capability that they want and RISC V as a foundational building blocks there. And much like Linux in software, RISC V provides this capability to provide it, uh, a hardware ecosystem as well. And so with adoption, focus, uh, and direction, uh, we can actually build a high performance computing ecosystem in Europe uh, that goes beyond its capabilities today uh, and provide that digital sovereignty. Now, this is a challenging process and we can't tackle it all at once. And so as with anything, the general purpose processor uh, space uh, has a lot of software and a huge lift to be compatible. And so what we're seeing is a very pragmatic approach where we're using accelerators or embedded spaces to drive the software ecosystem and select uh, tangible, tractable uh, components that uh, can focus the de development of the software side along with the hardware development. Uh, and as things evolve and with the advent of software in the open source community, it actually makes the overall lift easier, but still fundamentally there's a lot of work to be done there. And so you'll see, uh, I think, uh, improvements and capabilities and accelerators first, as we've seen uh, through various projects in the EU and in other places. Now, what that means for the SIG is we want to really look at expanding RISC-V from the embedded IoT space all the way to HPC and understanding uh, how do we create an ecosystem uh, that's there. So the vision really there is to create this technical and strategic imperatives that guide the RISC-V ecosystem and enable an open HPC uh, ecosystem, right? And so this is the, the fundamental uh, baseline is enabling uh, RISC-V to be competitive in HPC. And so that really is being addressed by a wide variety of software and hardware opportunities that target HPC. Uh, and this is anything from the edge uh, all the way to supercomputings and, and really driving that to include also the common kernels that exist in AI, machine learning, and deep learning, uh, really broadening traditional HPC to some of the high performance state analytics workloads that we see today. So in this new era, <clears throat> we're really focusing on an open computing era for high performance computing, 
where it's a collection of CPUs, accelerators, other hardware units, and coprocessors, right? Traditional hardware components that you would imagine, but also verification, compliance, methodologies, uh, platforms, all the things that are related to enabling high-performance computing. And that's everything from alignment to engagement and IP enablement. Uh, and we'll look at a lot of the different things that the SIG is enabling to try to make that a reality. This is not just a hardware conversation, it's also a software conversation. And so software ecosystem alignment is critical. And we wanna engage with both industry and academic uh, partners and events so that we can raise awareness and get more participation. And so really we look at this as a way to support global technology independence with the RISC-V ecosystem uh, roadmap and the associated partners. So all of those things are, are fantastic from, from that perspective. When we look at the initiatives that we're doing in the SIG, it really is guiding and enabling the community. And so we have different examples of looking at virtual memory uh, and obviously creating a similar specification to what Intel did with SB57. We've extended that to have some security uh, protocols in there with the SB57K. Uh, then a, a next step would be the SB64, 64-bit 64 virtual memory space. And there's older versions of 128-bit version, but all those things not only let us to get on par with current technology, but lead. And so that's exciting to be able to propose specifications that uh, haven't been done before and then demonstrate them. This is all part of uh, HPC software and hardware ecosystem and roadmap. We're currently working with the data center group uh, to define that and come up with a, a shared ecosystem roadmap where we can differentiate between HPC and data centers, but obviously leverage a lot of commonalities. And so it's great to be working with our computing cousins uh, in the data center space. We will look at accelerators, ISA extensions, and then uh, fundamental components of the HPC software stack. And I'll go into more details about that. And I'm excited to have a new announcement about some of the things that we're doing uh, to enable high performance computing. So stay tuned. All right, so with our friends at Tactical Computing Labs in Texas, uh, working with John Lydell, uh, they've created an HPC software test bed. And this is exciting. Uh, he's uh, my co-chair and also chairs up the uh, technology HC. So we work together to kind of drive high performance computing. And what we're seeing here is, you know, the first big rock is what software runs on this spot? Uh, this seems like a trivial question, but it's something that we can use automation to answer. And we can start with libraries, move up to benchmarks, tools, and applications, and then really drive this map and a gap analysis of where we have a technology holes uh, for RISC-V. So this is part of the excitement there. What we're doing is by a pull request, you can uh, start a Jenkins job, and that Jenkins job will go through a build process on the GCC side as well as the LLVM side to take your software and push it through the compilation phase. And at the end, we'll see if it compiles. And really this is HPC centric, but it can be used for anything. But we really wanna look at various uh, software suites, libraries, and make sure that the two main compilers work for that. And that's really the driving force for this. And we can do parallel builds, so you can build different versions. It's all built and automated from there uh, and based on the initial uh, pull request. As you can see at risk5test.org, uh, we are basically making these results public so we can share with the community and then point to people that actually can help. And I'll talk about a use case uh, where we've done that in the recent past. And then fundamentally from these scripts and the build logs, you can see what passed and what failed. And uh, that gives us the ultimate uh, differentiator to understand software quality and targeting uh, for RISC-V. And so that's a pretty exciting place to be able to say, hey, yeah, this works on RISC-V, this doesn't, and then understand which communities we need to target to figure that out. So with this, as I mentioned, is a public test harness. The results are publicly available. All you have to do is do a, a, a pull request in this, uh, the overall ecosystem is a BSD style license, so it's free to be used uh, with this Jenkins host. The other cool part of the public side of being Jenkins is there's a bunch of backends that you can do that are private. So if you have resources, either cross compile or native compile, and you wanna add to this test harness, we can actually target those as well. So with this capability, you expand this uh, to the community and make it bigger and better and try new software. And if you have software you wanna try, I encourage you to do a pull request and go from there. Now, that's part of the software side. What about traditional HPC hardware? 
InfiniBand is a traditional network that's been used across many different uh, HPC systems. And so it's a question of does InfiniBand work with RISC-V? So John and his team took uh, unmatched board, uh, an old uh, Connect X3 uh, Melex card, plugged it in and, and just to see if the system would work. This was great because it allows you to see if the system's configured uh, and how it works. They're running Ubuntu 21.04 and 21.10 with the uh, factory kernels. And it uh, basically pretty much runs uh, on the system with a few tweaks. Um, and the great thing is, as you would expect, you still have the same subnet manager issues that you have in a normal uh, IB environment. But what I'm showing here on the right is the IB stat showing the information about the card, uh, the Connect X3 card. And so that's exciting uh, to be able to see an older version of the card actually working and giving you IB uh, InfiniBand in the system. So this would provide a canonical, traditional, familiar infrastructure for RISC-V networking stack. Now, unfortunately, it's not out of the box. Um, we have this interesting scenario where the latest Linux kernels are shipped with sufficient drivers to run most of the IP stack. Um, this includes the basic drivers for IP over IP. Now, unfortunately, the latest RISC-V kernel lacks the RDMA driver support for Mellanox. And so you have to go and go to Mellanox, download it, uh, and get the drivers. Uh, but due to some changes in the kernels, they don't build RISC-V uh, Linux natively. And so this is one of the things that we have to solve. Now, the hope is that in the future uh, versions of the card, like the ConnectX uh, 4, this is solved. And so that's one of the pro processes that we're trying to look for and see if that can be uh, fixed. Now, part of that is looking at the software and hardware components that I discussed earlier, and obviously the entire traditional HPC stack but also getting community involved and in, in building awareness. And so one of the things that we're doing at ISC uh, 22 in Hamburg is having a birds of a feather or boff related to RISC-V. And we'll, we'll be talking about how do we create an open HPC ecosystem based on RISC-V. It's on Monday, so if you're at ISC, please come by and join us. Uh, Dave, Doug, and Michael will be providing some insight for the first 20 minutes on presentations uh, covering the software and hardware components within the RISC-V ecosystem. Uh, and then there'll be 40 minutes of discussion to understand what the community knows and doesn't know about RISC-V and in particular, how we apply it to uh, HPC. So again, uh, if you're in Hamburg and uh, wanna participate, please come by our BOF and hopefully we can have a great conversation about RISC-V and its capabilities in HPC. Now it doesn't stop there, right? Uh, supercomputing is in Dallas this year in November. Uh, the 13th to the 18th, and we'd like to continue uh, raising awareness of RISC-V in high-performance computing with a BOF or other types of things, and we're seeing a lot more traction with companies using RISC-V in high-performance computing and accelerators and so forth, and so this is a great opportunity for us to do that, uh, and so if you're interested in participating in a BOF or doing something bigger or encouraging RISC-V International to do something, uh, please don't hesitate to do that, and we're excited to uh, get the word out uh, about RISC-V and HPC. So one of the things I'm super excited about uh, is this upcoming supercomputing RISC-V lab, which we're calling SuperV at BSC. Uh, and fundamentally, we're trying to extend the capabilities of RISC-V and high-performance computing by giving people access to systems uh, for both uh, research and development. And so fundamentally, we need to enable the de development of high-performance ecosystems uh, based on RISC-V with those systems. And so what we're looking at is a variety of RISC-V clusters, so something like unmatched clusters that we have today, uh, and extend that all the way to experimental and research platforms where you can play with vector architectures, which we're excited about, either in FPJs and software emulators and hybrid software emulators. I'll come to some details in the next slide. But this is fundamentally an opportunity to do software hardware co-design uh, and ecosystem development. And so in the coming uh, weeks, we'll be giving information about access and, and the process to uh, get on the systems. And I'm excited because we've already seen our first success story in a conversation with the easy build community. They build a high performance computing software in terms of trying to make that as easy as possible to deploy. And RISC-V is getting on the radar. And so they got access to the unmatched cluster uh, and ran their software tools based on Gentoo and found that they had some issues. 
And so they were able to update their build environment to target RISC V, uh, make sure they had all the libraries and go from there. So super excited to see uh, that some HPC ecosystem components have already been targeting RISC V and were able to, by providing this ecosystem, do that. So stay tuned uh, and excited to hear from you if you want to play on uh, Super V. So what we have today, just as a background, is a bunch of different types of boards, anywhere from two gigabytes to 16 gigabytes uh, per a socket that gives you enough memory to do uh, a native build um, on the hardware side. Likewise, we have both soft cores with vectors and FPGAs if you want to play with uh, the vector extensions, or you can even do it more uh, on the software side with emulators and QEMU or a hybrid solution where we couple a scalar RISC V core with the VHAVE uh, RISC V emulator and put all that together. These systems are running a traditional high performance computing stack composed of Linux, Slurm, compilers, tools, libraries, all those things uh, from Fedora to Ubuntu. So ideally it provides an ecosystem where you can play and have fun. So. Super excited to create the first RISC V lab in Europe and provide that capabilities to develop the HPC ecosystem uh, for RISC V for the community. Now, at uh, RISC V Week, we've seen a lot of details on these projects and more. So I'm just highlighting some of the high performance computing stuff. There's so much uh, cool stuff going on in RISC V. But as you've seen, we've talked about uh, EPI, we've, there's been posters and, and discussions in the MEEP infrastructure, uh, eProcessor, EU Pilot, and the second version of the SGA2 all combined to create an ecosystem around RISC V, both the hardware and software, accelerators, processors, uh, and the software stack that runs on. So all of this uh, is showing you that uh, this is the beginning and there's even more to come. What do I mean by that? So when we started uh, some of the work in RISC V in Europe, um, it was not on the radar. And if you ask people about open source hardware, they just kind of looked at you blankly. And, and so in 2019, it was really messaging and getting people aware of what the capabilities were and how this could benefit uh, Europe. In 2020, we saw a shift, a change, and this notion of you know open source hardware exists and there's some traction in RISC V and there's projects like EPI that are leading the way. Uh, there's many other folks uh, in non-HPC areas that have done extraordinary work with, with RISC V as well. Uh, so uh, my focus has really been HPC. But we see this uh, change in 2021. There's a desire for a, a roadmap that came out uh, in November. Uh, we see Horizon Europe program starting to mention high performance uh, computing and RISC V and open source hardware, um, and that's growing. So there was a CSA call, this is a consortium to put together a roadmap. And in 2022, it's the mandate is to build RISC V. And so it's super exciting to see the key digital technologies or KDT have in its uh, version 13, over 25 different appearances of RISC V and a few on the open source hardware. In the EU CHIP Act, both RISC V and the open source hardware across the collection of documents that make up that uh, appears five times. And just this week, there is a new KDT call for uh, design of customizable and domain specific open source RISC V processors. So again, uh, we'll see even more to come from your HPC, the KDT or CHIPS JU uh, and other things in Europe. So super excited. And this spans everything from IoT to HPC. So we'll see how that uh, continues. Now. That's not it, right? There's a whole bunch of things that have to happen uh, where I think HPC is the perfect domain for us five. HPC requires customized hardware software solutions. And so um, generally leading edge technology exists in HPC and they're willing to uh, go to the bleeding edge and put in the effort to do that. We're tackling a bunch of different grand challenges for the global technology ecosystem. And so whether it's personalized medicine, climate, what have you, these are all scenarios where accelerators and new technology uh, can, can be used. Now, the exciting thing about an open ISA is it complements an open source software ecosystem. And so by combining those together, uh, we can create the open ecosystem. And fundamentally with open source software, that paves the way for a new ISA and one that's open. And so RISC-V can basically be used to innovate and accelerate both research and industry. And obviously, as you've seen from previous talks, uh, the RISC-V community is growing. So super excited to see all those things again. Now, you can help, right? Uh, it's not just us today. If you're excited about high performance computing, join us. Uh, we have meetings every third Thursday at 4 p.m. Uh, Central European time. 
please uh, come. The next one is on May 19th, and we're super excited to have you be there and all the great things that we can do within the RISC-V community. With that, thank you very much. Have a great rest of the conference.